regiments of renown are elite units with special abilities and improved battle performance. They are considered the best of the best, brave and fanatically loyal to their cause, naturally talented in the art of war, heavily reinforced with armor and guns, their enhanced combat proficiency inspires their comrades and strikes fear into the hearts of the enemy. There are 14 regiments of renown in total, one representing each unit type. They are expensive to build and limited in number. A nation can own only one of each type and may purchase only one per turn. Careful consideration must be taken to ensure the right one is purchased at the right time and with the right strategy in mind to maximize their impact in the war effort. Though any one nation cannot own multiple of the same type of regiment of renown, those which have been destroyed in battle can be purchased again in a subsequent turn. All you need for this house rule is to distinguish one unit type for each nation to represent their one-of-a-kind regiments of renown units. And I would recommend using acrylic paint to do this. It dries quickly and you can easily scratch it off later, but you can do whatever you like. The costs and abilities which I've come up with are as follows. The infantry regiment of renown will cost five IPCs and will defend at three in all original territories and in any territory containing a victory city. Also, during the place units phase, they can be placed in any victory city controlled since the start of your turn. No factory required. The artillery will cost seven IPCs and can support two infantry on attack. You can also bombard adjacent land territories with one dice at two or less, instead of making any other movements. The enemy units in the target territory don't get a chance to roll back against this move, and whether or not the shot is successful, the artillery will have to remain in place, cannot move again that turn. The tank costs 10 IPCs and simply attacks and defends at four. The mech costs 6 IPCs and it can blitz on its own as well as moving 3 spaces but uh, only during the non-combat phase. If it moves in any other phase it gets only 2 movement points. AA gun costs 9 IPCs and any rolls of a 2 force an air unit to retreat immediately. It doesn't destroy the air unit, it just cannot participate in that battle and we'll have to land later on. The fighter costs 13 IPCs and it will attack at 4 in any round of combat the player has air superiority so in other words you would need to have a greater number of air units than your enemy in order to gain the ability of rolling at 4. Also when intercepting rolls of a 2 force a bomber to retreat immediately again doesn't destroy the bomber but the bomber has to retreat. The tactical bomber will cost 14 IPCs and has a base movement of 5 points, meaning it can move up to 6 spaces if it starts its movement at an airbase. Also, it can bomb minor industrial complexes. Not major, just minor. The bomber will cost 14, that's the strategic bomber, 14 IPCs and uh, has plus 3 damage during strategic bombing raids. The transport ship will cost 10 IPCs and has a unit carrying capacity of 3 if transporting only infantry units. Otherwise, it just has the regular 1 infantry and any one other land unit. And also, it defends at 1 in all rounds of combat but it does not have an, an attack value. The submarine costs 9 IPCs and surprise strikes hit at plus 1 their usual hit value which will of course be at 3 or less on attack and at 2 or less on defense 
and it will roll three dice during convoy raids. The destroyer will cost 10 IPCs, defends at three in any round of combat the enemy has submarines present, can also bombard at two or less. The cruiser costs 15 IPCs and the cruiser gets to fire one preliminary AA shot at the beginning of the first round of combat if one or more enemy air units are present. And this works on both attack and defense. For example, let's say this cruiser is attacking or defending against air units. It will fire one dice before any other rolling occurs and if it rolls a one, then the enemy will have to remove an air unit immediately. Also, this cruiser gets to bombard at four or less. The aircraft carrier costs 20 and can carry up to three air units. And the battleship costs 26 IPCs. It will roll at five in the first round of combat. And only when undamaged, uh, the first hit is completely ignored. The second hit will cause damage, and of course the third hit will sink it. Uh, the first hit can only be ignored, though, if the battleship isn't already damaged at the start of the battle. Otherwise, that ability is negated. In the description is a link to where you can download PDFs of the rules, uh, all laid out in a nice chart. Uh, there's a version for the global 1940 games and a version for the non-G40 games. If you print these to A4, you'll have two player aid cards with all the info and the costs and abilities on, of the regiments. And if you print double-sided, you'll get the rules on the back. This house rule works with any version of the game, but depending on which version you're playing, some of the abilities might be obsolete. Uh, I appreciate that not everyone is going to like all these abilities and costs that I've suggested, so what I've done is I've made a blank version which you can use to design your own regiments of renown. And I haven't tested this house rule extensively yet, but I have had a few games with it, and it's a really simple way to spice up a game and add a new layer of strategy. Uh, but there may need to be some further tweaks for balance and such, so if anyone has any of their own suggestions for this, or how the rule should work differently, then please do go ahead and share it in the comments section, and uh, I'll pin a comment at the top with any updates I make to this set of rules. Quick practical tip as well, you don't need to stack your regiments of renown separately from their regular unit counterparts. A regiment of renown piece on top of a stack of chips still represents that many units. One of them is going to be your regiment of renown, the rest just standard. Inspiration for this house rule came from an unusual place, uh, Total War Warhammer, which is a game on PC. The name and the concept I borrowed from there. I just adapted it for Axes and Allies. And that's about it. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy this one.